Hello guys, so I just wanted to really quickly run through some of the basic differences between classes, structs and enums in Swift. These are really, really fundamental to the language, so it's important you understand them. And I just hoped I could help clear some stuff up for people who aren't quite getting it, because I know I didn't at the start. So we're going to be running through some examples in a Swift package, which is different from an Xcode project. It's basically a platform independent way to manage uh, the code that you're running in Swift because um, Xcode only runs on the Mac at the moment. So I'm just going to run through some quick examples using a Swift package, and it's great with Swift 5.3 because Swift packages now support Windows and loads more Linux distributions as well, which is really, really good for platform sort of uniformity across all these different things. We're only going to be using the Swift standard library, which is the basic stuff that's built in with Swift today, so we're not depending on any packages or anything, so it should be nice and simple. All right, so let's just get started. I'm going to quickly make a directory called differences and we're going to jump right into it and then I'm going to make a new Swift package that we can run and sort of try things out so we're going to say Swift package in it type executable that's going to make us an ex executable package that we can then run from excellent so now if we have a little look at what's in here we'll see there's loads of stuff that Swift's added for us and yeah I am running um, Swift 5.3, which just came out uh, yesterday, I think, officially, which is ideal. Right, so we're just going to jump right in. Delete that, don't need that. Okay, so the most basic thing in Swift is like a one of the raw data types from the standard library, like an integer. So we can say let num equals 100. And this is gonna be inferred to be, uh, oops, uh, what the hell went on there? There we go. This is going to be inferred to be of type int. But we obviously don't need to write that because Swift can figure this out for us. So if we have a look at that, we see, yeah, it's an integer. There are also other types in Swift, like strings. We can say name equals John, and that'll be inferred to be of type, of type string. There's also Booleans. So cool, false. Of course, and inferred to be of type bool. But obviously, yeah, we don't need to write these type annotations here because Swift can figure this out for us. We don't need to do anything. Well, we can get there. Swift knows because these types are very simple. And the key thing with some of these key types is that pretty much all of them use something called value semantics. And what value semantics means is that you know that the value is sort of like independent. It's like you can copy it and it doesn't matter and you can just make infinite copies of something if you need to. So for example, if we were to make a copy of our number, we say new number is gonna be equal to num. And then we say new number, add one to it. So this is our num up here, that's 100. And this is going to be our new number. So we're taking number, we're literally taking it. Okay. We're taking the number and then we're adding one to it. So what do you think the value of new number is going to be? Well, I think it's going to be 101 because we're taking 100, adding one to it. It's 101. So we'll say new number and then we'll print it out there. What do you think the value of the old number is going to be? Well, you'd think it would be 100, wouldn't you? Because it was 100 here, so it should still be 100, right? But we are taking it here and adding one to it. So is it gonna be adding one to this number? Or is it gonna make a copy and then add it? Well, let's have a look. So Swift run is gonna sort of build our package for us and run. And we see exactly what we expect. The new number's 101, the old number's 100. Because we're not, changing the old number we're copying it here because the int type in swift has value semantics and that is true for strings and it's true for booleans and it's true for doubles as well so decimal point numbers okay this brings us nicely onto structs a struct is just a way to package up other types so you can pass them around and the most important thing about it is it also uses value semantics structs package up 
data to pass around, they use value semantics. So if we have a person, for example, we'll say they have an age and we'll say, are they cool or not? So then we have a person called John. Let's just move this into the middle. They're going to have an age, let's say 20. And are they cool? Sure, why not? Okay, so now John is a person age 20 and he's cool. Now let's say another person comes along. Her name is Sally. And she's exactly the same age as John and she's cool. So why can't we just copy John's data like this? Well, they're going to be exactly the same, aren't they? Let's just go ahead and print these. So we're going to say John is John. And this will just let us really easily see the difference between these two um, people. So we're just going to copy that right over. And I'm just going to change the John here into, oops, I need to, John into Sally, there we go. Okay, so now we're gonna print both of these two things as well. And I'm just quickly going to comment out this because otherwise you might get confused with the old printing. And we see, yeah, they're exactly the same. John and Sally are identical, ideal. But now say Sally does something that isn't so cool and Sally is not cool anymore. So Sally is no longer cool. What do you think John is gonna be? Well, obviously John's still gonna be cool, isn't he? Because only Sally's the one that's not cool anymore. So Sally's not gonna be cool, but John is. John's cool, Sally's not. Because the data between John and Sally here is being copied. Sally takes all the fields from John and it copies all of them over into Sally. None of the data is being shared. This is not true if we use classes. So let me delete this and change this into a class. And this also means we have to add an initializer because Swift likes to be annoying sometimes. Self.age equals age, self dot cool equals cool, and that is just assigning stuff from the initializer into these inner storage values here. So now what do you think is going to happen? John is copied into Sally. Sally is not cool. So should John still be cool? We would think that he should be. It's only Sally the one who isn't being cool anymore. Let's see what happens. If we run. Uh, it's going to be a bit annoying to print now because we're using a class. So let's just go ahead and print. This is just for our own debugging purposes. We're just going to go ahead and print if they're cool or not. We're not actually going to print the whole object. Oops. Let's swift run. And we see now neither of them are cool. But how is that the case? Because we only changed Sally to be not cool. But it also says John isn't cool. And that's because the data is being shared because this is now a class. So John has a reference to this person object. Sally then is saying point to the same reference as John and change cool to false. This means there's only one person object now, and Sally makes it false, the cool field here. And that means also John is pointing to this same thing. So it means they're both gonna become not cool just because Sally didn't do something cool. And this is the fundamental difference between structs and classes. Classes have sharing of state, and this can sometimes lead to bugs because you might not realize that the data is being shared so you need to really, really be careful when you're dealing with classes like this because it's very, very easy to have some sort of unintended consequence like this where someone will become not cool just because one other person did something not cool.
And that in itself is not cool, quite ironically. So this is why in Swift we tend to prefer structs because there's less chance of this unintended sharing of state. And if you use a language like Rust, well, there are no classes. You have to do your own sort of memory management like that. But in Swift, it's nice that we have these sort of constructs built right into the language. So we can just choose class or struct depending on you know, what our data requires. Because some classes, sometimes classes are needed. So if we have a long running object that's managing some sort of data, we only want one of them around and we might want to point to it from all different angles. If we only want one of them, a class is probably the best way to go. So we're going to prefer a struct here for our sort of data model because we want this stuff to be copied between the two of them, not shared. So if you want copying, not sharing, use a struct. Sharing, not copying, use a class. Now it's important to note that you can actually copy data between classes, but I'm not going to go into that now. Um, this is just a really simple overview. And you also do need to consider in the event that one of these fields is a class, um, what data is going to be shared. So you need to watch out for that as well. But we're just dealing with a simple case here where both of these are also value types. So value semantics applies to this whole object. And speaking of value semantics, this brings us nicely onto enums. Enums are basically structs as well, but in a more simple way. Say we have a computer. This computer can be in a number of different states. It can be on, it can be off, it can be broken, it can be... Um, let's just stick with that for the moment. But we see the computer can only be in three possible states. So let's say my computer is going to be a computer and it's on. Simple as that. And we see we get this auto completion here. The computer can only be in three possible states. We can't set it to be anything we want. So this is really handy when you only want to have a certain set of values to be assigned to something. That's how we'll use an enum. And it's really handy that this is built right into the language. So we can say, my computer's on. And then say, you want your computer to copy the state of my computer. But then you're very clumsy and you drop your computer. So your computer is now broken. My computer is not going to be broken because enums also have value semantics. So we'll just say down here, enums have value semantics. And what this is going to mean is that this is a copy here. This is not a share. So you're copying the state of my computer, then your computer is broken. But my computer is not changed. We each have our own copy of the data. My computer still works. Yours is broken because this operation here copies. And it's as simple as that. And now there are loads of other features that we can use with it when it comes to enums and structs and stuff like that. I'm not going to get into them too much now, but it's just one really, really handy thing in enums is you can associate additional data with each of these states. So for instance, I can attach a bit of data here, like a string to this on state. Or actually, let's have a date attached to this state here. We're going to have to import foundation for this because Swift does not have date in its standard library. And then it will tell us the time that computer was turned on. So I can say it was turned on at that very moment. And then I can keep track of when the computer was turned on. And I could also attach a date to when the computer was turned off. And I could also attach a date to when it was broken. But when we start seeing stuff like this with duplicated data between every single state, we'll probably best refactoring this into a class, into a struct, sorry, where one field holds the date and one field will hold the state of the computer, for example. But, you know, there's loads of different um, decisions that can be made when it comes to structuring data like this, but it's generally a bad practice to have duplicated fields like this in an enum. But it is just really handy to know that you can associate data with those states in an enum. So just to recap, let's make a bit of space at the bottom. 
bit of space at the bottom. So, bit of space at the bottom. Let's make a bit more space. I want to get all this old stuff off the screen. Right. Enums and structs are similar. They both have value semantics. It's just that enums can store different kinds of data than structs. Structs can package data. Enums represent a finite number of states. Classes have reference. Reference semantics where the data, the memory of the object will be shared between different references. All right, so that's just about it. Let me know if you have any questions or anything else and yeah, see you later.